GMBA Universe. In this episode, let's welcome Fernando Lopez. Fernando is from the class of 2011, who has developed his teaching career in Taiwan and successfully built a language training center in Xinchu. He's here to share his thrilling experience in GMBA and enlighten us on how he started his entrepreneurial journey here in Taiwan. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of GMBA Universe. I'm your host Wesley, I'm from class 2011. 23. Uh, on today's episode, we are glad to have Professor Jing Su and also our great alumni, Fernando Lopez, with us today. And he is going to share with us his experience in Taiwan and as well as in GMBA. Thanks for inviting me. Thanks for saying that if I can, if I can come, it's actually my pleasure to be here. We are very excited to hear your experience. So, as we all know that globalization is the norm of modern society right now, and English is the second language which everyone learns today. However, there's one language you can learn and you can communicate with almost everyone in the world, and that is Spanish. And Fernando, uh, after he's graduating from GMBA, he's starting his career in teaching Spanish in Taiwan. But first of all, I want to ask you, why do you choose to study in Taiwan? And why do you choose to for, for GMBA? Actually, when I was in, studying my university in Guatemala, uh, most of the teachers, they say, if you learn English, and you learn about computers, that's okay, but that soon is not going to be enough. Hmm. My, okay. All my professors, they say, that is not going to be enough. You need at least a second foreign language to, okay. to be competitive in the world. You need to learn more about the, about the world. If you are, because I am an engineer, right. if you are focusing only in the engineering, engineering field, you don't know anything about administration, economic, uh, statistics, marketing. You need to expand your knowledge. Okay. So in that time, I listened more to my teachers, and I was looking, what language should I study? I, in Guatemala, I choose to study Chinese. You choose to study Chinese? Yes, because I was thinking everybody speaks English. So I want something that is totally different. That is going to, be to, to say, wow, why do you speak Chinese? <laughs> and, okay. I was, and I remember a lot of products in Guatemala, they were coming from Taiwan, China, and different places mm. they're speaking Chinese. So mm. I was thinking, maybe it's in the future. Mm. Maybe in the future this is going to be useful. So I, I went to learn Chinese. My teacher was Taiwanese. Okay. okay. And, uh, and the teacher used to share with us stories about the former students. And one day she said, do you know, if you study Chinese, you have the chance to go to Taiwan to study for, with a scholarship. Oh. Maybe to study one year the language, right. to study a master's degree, right. or uh, another, an, another what, another career. And I was thinking, wait, why I don't go to study a master's degree? Because I listen from my teacher. I start to look for opportunities, I got one, and I was thinking, what master I should have? Mm -hmm. In that time, I was considering three or four different kind of masters. I wanted an, an MBA as engineering. We don't know much about uh, marketing, administration, and I want to expand my knowledge. Second, I want to learn about finance because engineers don't, we don't know mostly <laughs> about finance. <laughs> I want to know about marketing or information management. And I was looking what opportunities I have to come in Taiwan and start to research. Oh, they have a GMBA. <laughs> okay. And I decided to, to come here. Well, what, what is it about? GMBA that attracts you? The international field. International field. International field. Most people, they are growing up in the same country, in the same place, around, with, working with the same people, in the same culture. We tend to think all the war is the same as our war. And we tend to think, why do you do the ways and do you that? Because in my country, we don't do the same. In that, in, in that kind, we, can, mm -hmm. we become a kind of blind culture. Okay. But here, I can know about I, I was researching people from different countries. So, so if I go there, I have a free class, a free <laughs> culture class, knowing about right. the Taiwanese culture, mm -hmm. uh, Japanese, Korean, Vietnamese, for free. I will know more about that for free. Okay, okay. This time our program was very young. So how did you find the information about our program? Because uh, they have a one, one generation. In one generation, I saw there were people from different countries. I think, wow, that's good. Oh, I, see. I see. That's good. What courses of the... GMBA, which you had after you experienced the different cultures, after you look all the courses ABI studied, what courses was your favorite and what courses helped you the most in starting your career in Taiwan? Actually, I don't remember the name of the course exactly. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry, I'm getting too old to do <laughs> little stuff. <laughs> okay, okay, that's fine. But I, the course that I really enjoyed was the courses when we were talking about business model and business plan, and when we were talking about the um, I don't even remember the name, the Harvard cases. Ah, uh, yeah, with the Professor Tang, right? Oh, Professor uh, yes. Tang. Why? 
Because in those courses, when we are learning about business model, business plan, and Harvard cases, all the content, marketing, finance, statistics, accounting, all <coughs> is in that class. Mm. I think it's global business management, maybe? I guess so, okay. maybe in that time. Okay. But in, when you are learning about business model, you need to know more about how to manage resources, about statistics, what, mm -hmm. what your marketing plan, your forecasting. Your, uh, when you need to apply everything. Those, are, those were my favorite classes. Okay. And you mentioned before you were an engineer, yes. right? And based on your information we looked up, you have around five years of teaching experience plus from uh, studying in uh, 1992 when you, you, when you are younger and, and you have been teaching all the way up. And after graduation, you didn't start to study engineer. You start your, your career in teaching Spanish. Actually, I was working as an engineer because I, even I didn't have finished the university in Guatemala, okay. my work was related with te telecommunications. Telecommunications. Mm -hmm. So that was my field of work for 20 years in Guatemala. Okay. No, 15 years. 15 years. 15, 15 years. years. 15 years in the same company, in the biggest telecommunications company in Guatemala. Okay. Why, why, why do you want to trans transfer your career position from engineer to teacher? Actually, I always love teaching. You always love teaching. I always love teaching, even as an in, uh, as an engineer. I used to tutorial tutorial my classmates or my friends about mathematics, uh, statistics, mm -hmm. about um, finance in that time in Guatemala. Mm -hmm. I used to give them classes to help them to raise the, the raise their scores. So I used to do it. I love teaching, and I love talking about business. I love teaching about business as well in Spanish. Mm -hmm. When I came to the I was already thirty eight years old. Right. I, I give up. Uh, a job from 15 years mm -hmm. in the biggest telecommunications company. When I have the opportunity to go for different positions, also I was going to different interviews mm -hmm. for getting a new job yeah. with bigger salary, and I gave up. Why? A new life. I want to do something new. I want to renew myself. Okay. People is most afraid to renew themselves, to start from zero. Sure. Yeah. Most people is, is afraid to start from zero. And all my life I was thinking, why to be afraid? A human being is always afraid of zero, yes. afraid of fail. Yes. But failure is part of learning. Mm -hmm. And I was wanting to do something from zero, again. <laughs> okay. It doesn't, it doesn't frighten you? No, I, I am, I'm no, happy doing from something from zero, <laughs> from, scratch, <laughs> from scratch, to say, I did it. <laughs> okay. And so this conquer language is your uh, Spanish teaching center in, in Taiwan? Yes. I, I don't know. If you are looking for something, what to do in your life, uh, there is a strategy. Never fails. Never fails. You can go around, go around your neighborhood, go around your city, and look. What do you What do you feel uncomfortable with? Mm. What would you like to have that they don't have in that place? What do you like? What would you like to do that they don't offer to you? Okay. So, so this is why you decided to teach Spanish in the place, in the market where there's none, and you're studying. So, but, but later on, I think I think many many other language centers are also rise up and starting to see the the market needs for this one. I want to ask you what. Uh, how does Conquer language differentiate itself from other business? That is the key point. That is the key point. When you, are, when you enter in a market, you have two options. Or you are the first mover or you are the follower. Mm -hmm. But in Sinchu, we were kind of follower because there were two three places we teaching Spanish. I don't know if they are working anymore. <laughs> okay. But we learned about the, how is the people learning language in Taiwan. Oh, tell me about it. <laughs> you see? So we were thinking, why, why we don't try to do something different? Why don't try to do something more communicative? Mm -hmm. Right. We, we face many people learn language, learn language. In a dull way. No, they can read, they can listen, they can write, but they cannot speak. Mm -hmm. Or exactly. maybe they don't, dare, they, they don't dare to speak. So we develop our teaching style in a, uh, actually it has a name, the communicate, communication, communication method. Communication method. Most of the language schools, I don't know, I don't know, but I have listened, usually use foreigners for the conversation part, mm -hmm. but not in our school. In our school, even with, with the native speakers, we teach grammar. So you emphasize the fundamentals? Yes, of course. Communication, but also we foreigners, we teach grammar. I see, I see. We teach grammar. So it's different about to say, oh, the foreigners just for playing games, uh, mm -hmm. conversation, and without teaching anything, just reviewing what the Taiwanese teacher has mm -hmm. thought before. No, we don't. Okay. But, but then, you know, in our program, we always emphasize entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. So. So what is the knowledge or skills that you learned from school helped you a lot in your business? And then I want to have a follow-up question that what is the biggest difference 
between school education and in, in reality when you start to do your own business? First point, when you are learning about uh, in, in the GMA from for example, marketing yeah. or statistics, you need to forecast. You need to have statistics about how many people is learning the language. In this case, how many people is learning Spanish in okay. Taiwan. Okay. How many schools they are teaching. So we need to look. In, in, for example, we open in Sinchu. Mm. And people say, why Sinchu? Yeah, why Sinchu? Right, right. Most people are, are opening Taipei or Kaohsiung or Taichung. Followers, not first movers. Ah, uh, okay. So many we, we we face many doing a marketing research, a soft, a really quick marketing research. Many people from Ta from Sinchu every weekend they go to Taipei, Taipei to true. learn something. That's true. And I say, yeah. why we don't give them the chance to study to study in Sinchu? So we can, they are free. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't need to go to Taipei at least if they want. So we start with this idea. So you mean you, you learned to think differently? Of to course. To identify opportunities. Identify the market, I identify see. the need, I something see. that we learned from the GMA, especially when we are doing the um, product analysis, the product and market, market analysis, marketing yeah, analysis, yeah. yes. So we need to know where, what is the need. Sure. Okay. And we face, many people is going there, and how much they are paying. Mm -hmm. How much they are paying. At the end, they are paying a lot of money every day. And time. Because you need to trigger. Yeah, yeah. Right. Timing. Timing is also valuable. Yes. But in, in, in money, it's also the same because you need to pay if you ride, yeah, drive by yourself, sure. gasoline. Sure. Yeah. It's not cheap. No. It's not cheap. <laughs> your timing, your car, depreciation car. Uh, you are going to eat, drink something in Taipei, of course, sure. hanging out with friends. Sure. At the end, for a class, at these two hours that you are going to pay, let's say a number. If you pay 100, it's not 100, but for sale. Mm. So mm. If you pay 100 for one class, two hours class, how much do you? Expand in other issues. Maybe two to four hundred. Two, three times that. Yeah. So it, we give them the chance to stay in Taiwan, to stay in Sinchu, save money, save time, mm -hmm. happy family. Mm. Adults, okay. Especially adults. So over, well, this is already 10 years of your operating. You have developed different, different pages for your uh, business. You yes. have YouTube channels, you have Facebook, you have Instagram. You even have Spotify on, on your for your channel. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, I, we, we, we searched it. It's um, esta pareja. Esta pareja. Esta pareja. This is this, pe this couple. This couple. Take yeah. Fuji. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And how, how do you manage so many different pages at the same time? Something that you need to do is do what you love. As Yin Su could remember, I love speaking. <laughs> all the Latinos love speaking. Yes, I love speaking. Uh, yeah, all Latinos we love speaking. Yeah. But I, I remember since I was teenager, I I love to be in stage. In the stage. I okay. love the public speaking. Okay. Oh, okay. That part I didn't know. Yeah. I, I love the public speaking. I see, I see. I love the public speaking. I enjoy to be in front of people, uh, giving something to them, mm. or maybe make them laugh. <laughs> so okay. I that that feeling is give me more energy. Okay. Give me more. I, okay. I give that. I receive that when I am doing the public speaking. It also gives you a sense of satisfaction. Yes, of course. Okay. And so when we start uh, for the social networks, yes, we, for the audio is easier. For the podcast, it's easier. We, yes. I have just sat down. Many people used to write down what they are going to say. Point one, point two, okay. point three, point five. <laughs> when they are going to do a podcast. Yes. With my wife, we never do that. You just talk. We just talk. We say, <laughs> what "Do you want to talk today? Uh, let's talk about baseball. Did you see that news? Okay, let's talk about that." Natural, in a natural way. Okay, in a natural way. In a natural way. So we start to develop <coughs> a, a, a game. Yeah. See, what bothers you that, that there is not. Okay, and there's opportunity. So we did something for people who is learning Spanish in advanced level. People who are learning in university, they, in order to be graduated from Spanish career, they need to have the B1 level yes. from language. Yes. If they want to finish the master's degree in Spanish, they have to B2. Yes. But they need, they need to pass the international test daily. Yes. But they, there is no material for them. Okay. So what they do? So what they do? So they start to look for books, overseas books, look movies, look something, but it's not going to be enough for them, or it's going to be too advanced for them. So we speak in that way. So people who are studying the master's degree, they are following us. They have something where to learn. And uh, what, what about the other social media? How do you keep them all organized? When you do something, that is something that you learn from SEO. Okay. When you do something, you need to do something that is not going to be useful only once. If you do something, a Reels, or an Instagram post, a Facebook post, a blog, a video, anything, doesn't be to, doesn't be to if we use, do it only once. It's not for using only once. If, because you are going to spend a lot of time, a lot of effort sure, doing sure, something sure. that is going to be just for one second, you are never using it again. 
So when we do something, it's for posting in different networks. Mm -hmm. For different people, of course, but different networks. For example, uh, I do the um, Chinese, for, Chinese for Spanish speakers. Right. Two ways. People, Latinos who study Chinese and Taiwanese who study Spanish. Both networks. Of course, I have another, another um, Facebook account that is um, making even some Spanish. Every day, one minute of uh, business Spanish. Okay. So this post, if the content is really related with business or something special, I also post it there. So I use it three times. So do something that you can reuse it. Okay. Well, you know, now you're when I listen to you, you're a completely businessman. I cannot <laughs> imagine that you used to be an engineer before. So is it <laughs> us who changed you or you are a businessman inside? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, in engineering, because I am an industrial engineer, my favorite classes was about project management. Okay, I see, I see. So I learned this. You had the preference for business. Yes. Yeah, I see, I see. Mm -hmm. And in Guatemala, I was thinking about looking for a job or opening my own business. Mm -hmm. Okay, now back to, um, well, since you are really focusing on your business and projects, right? And I'm sure that as a foreigner in Taiwan, starting a business is not easy, mm -hmm. right? And so, what are some of the difficulties you face starting your business in Taiwan? And what are some of the advices you can give for our foreign students if they want to start? For one of the most difficult parts about starting a business in Taiwan, for example, is that uh, when you are going to do something, most of the information is not in English. Most information is not English, yes. Why? Because we, many people, they don't expect a foreigner is going to open a business by their own. Sure. Many people is, uh, um, used to li listen about, uh, me as a foreigner, I am going to open a business with, but with a Taiwanese partner. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And but because of that, most of banks, mm. most of banks, they are going to give you a credit only mm -hmm. for foreigners. Mm -hmm. They are going to give you a credit only if you have a Taiwanese partner that's going yeah. to be responsible for your debt. Exactly. <laughs> okay. So that is something difficult. Uh -huh. That is something difficult to have a good credit. And also, if you are going to be the boss, for mm -hmm. example, a school, yes. you cannot be the owner if you are a foreigner. It's, you can. There is no law that they say you cannot. But they try to avoid that situation. Be okay. So how to avoid that? What? Immerse yeah. yourself into the culture. Immerse yourself. For example, culture. every time I, with my wife, we were going to any meeting from the education, Ministry of Education, with the people who is, um, with the firework, five workers? Firefighters, firefighters, firefighters. Mm. When they need to check our school, right. mm -hmm. I was there. Right. I was there, and I was trying to improve my Chinese to be part of the conversation. Right. Yes. Okay. Yes. Then I should ask, what is the, your biggest cultural shock here? Biggest <laughs> cultural shock? Actually, the first one. Yeah. The first one. Many people have talked about the many issues, but many people say this. The first one is because Latinos we learn, we like to every time we see each other we <laughs> shake hands, we shake hands. Oh, we right. But the first time I say with, with Asians, the first time they shake hands. Second time no. Mm. So my, the first time I met you, first time, okay, hi. But tomorrow I met you again, you just do this, and I... <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what to do. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I'll ask one more question. Sure. Uh, because, <laughs> what to ask me. Yeah, um, because for students who do go for a company, having a degree from our university is very important. But for students who start a business, is it important to have a degree from you know, Yangming Zhaotong University, GMBA? You think that there is a difference with and without degree, even when you start a business? When you start a business, you don't really need a degree. You can see Steve Jobs, yeah. he quit university. Bill Gates, he sure, quit course, university. Yeah. Sure. Uh, Zuckerberg, they quit university. They don't need a degree. Mm. You need to have a good idea. The, something that is going to give you the university or the mm. school is to give you the tools to know how to do it. Mm. Because if you remember the story about those, these three guys, for example, at the beginning they have a lot of mistakes because they were lack of uh, people management. I won't say names. <laughs> I won't say names. But many people, they have the lack of people management, okay. marketing management. They don't know about um, finance. So they crash many times. And they, they learn by the experience. But if we can save that part, we can learn from the school that is, going, that is something that the school gives you. Mm -hmm. The knowledge, the tools. What are you going to do with those tools? It's up to you. But the school gives you the tools. Okay. But when, now when, I am, when we were looking for the grades and setting up the school, we say, my wife, she's from Shida. Yes. Oh, Shida, wow. Yeah, right. And you, uh, Jiao Tong. Oh, Jiao Tong, <laughs> wow. So when you, are, when you are introducing yourself, if you have that background, they say, oh, wow. Yeah, their eyes open up. <laughs>
you can build your credibility yes. easily. Yes, uh, yeah. yes, good. yes, good. yes. Good. So they say, oh, you're learning from a good school, yeah. so you know what you are doing. You are smart, right? <laughs> at, at least enough to be great. <laughs> at least enough to be great. But they say, oh, so you know what you are doing. Uh, okay. You are not an amateur. So that's something, something that the school is going to give you, mm -hmm. the name. Mm -hmm. That background and say, I am coming from here. And everybody say, okay, be careful. This guy is coming from a good place. <laughs> So uh, for, for us students in GMBA, we are learning parts of that also. And we want, we want to start maybe in different business, we want to learn more how to manage it uh, in business. Uh, I want to ask you, do you have any other advices for our students, juniors, graduates, for in their life in your career? Yes, actually, I, this is advice I always say to every, everybody. It's advice to everybody. And I have, <laughs> and I have a IG account with this name. Okay. <laughs> In, in Chinese, in the, the people who is learning something new, mm. the brain doesn't get old. Okay. Oh, Chinese is good. <laughs> 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 right? Chinese oh. I told you, science, if you're learning something, your neurons are going to start to make relationships. Mm. Right. People who don't learn, the neurons, they don't make new relationships. Is that the science? But I always believe so. If you want to, to, if you want to be successful in life, keep learning. Oh, thank you, Fernando, for for your honest sharing today. It's it's very wonderful experience and wonderful insights for our students to learn. And hopefully, we find many aspirations in life and in your future GMBA career. And thank you, Professor Jinsu, for coming today. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in in our GMBA universe today. Please follow our official page for more content in the future, and we will see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.